Are you looking for ways to bring more nature into your classroom? Bringing the outdoors in can create a calmer and more soothing environment for young children. I mean, who doesn't want more calm and less chaos in their classroom, am I right? In today's episode of Elevating Early Childhood, I'm going to share easy ways to bring more nature into your math center in the preschool or pre-K classroom. Because we have to start somewhere, right? And to me, the math center seems like an easy place to start. There are so many natural items that can be used as counting manipulatives. All of the materials that I'm going to show you today were very inexpensive with the exception of the tray. I built this entire math center for less than $30. So why are we talking about this today? Here's the thing. We have been using these brightly colored math manipulatives in our classrooms for decades. There's the colored transportation counters, everyone's favorite colored teddy bears, farm animals, the list goes on and on. You see, it used to be thought that using those fun, bright colors would attract children's attention and keep them engaged for longer periods of time. Now, these things do work as math manipulatives, but in my own classroom, every year there was at least one kid who would ask me, why is the duck red? Or why is the cow blue? And I really didn't have a good answer for that. But now research has shown that having so much brightly colored plastic in the classroom can not only add to the visual noise and clutter of the environment, but it can also lead to problems with attentional control and increased behaviors. Because it turns out that all those fun, bright colors that we all know and love can actually be distracting for young children. These colors can cause them to lose focus and pay less attention instead of more. Now, I don't know about you, but I would definitely not want to do anything in my own classroom that could have a negative effect on behaviors or attention. So today I'm challenging you to bring more calm into your classroom by adding natural items into the learning environment. Now, this doesn't mean we have to throw everything in our classrooms away, but we can make conscious decisions going forward about what we add to the learning environment. And it doesn't have to happen overnight. You can add more things to your classroom gradually. You can start by doing it center by center because some centers are easier to transform than others. And that's why I'm starting with the math center. So let's dive into all the goodies, shall we? So if you're watching along, you can see my tray of natural objects here on the screen. And these are just a few examples of things you can do in your math center. There are many more possibilities for using natural objects in this area. So first up, we have this wooden, I guess it would be called a chip and dip tray in the early childhood world. It was actually in my kitchen and it was something that we used for um, a party that we had with vegetables and like dip in the center. So it's a wooden tray, just like the ones, the plastic ones that you see from the dollar stores, but this one is made from wood. And I did not include this in the total cost of the materials because it was something I already had. And when I looked it up on Amazon, it was super expensive. I'm so glad I bought it a long time ago. So inside this tray, we have, obviously, we've got some buttons. Buttons are a great math manipulative, and a lot of us have those brightly colored plastic buttons. But these wood buttons were so cheap on Amazon, and they're just natural looking. I think they're coconut or something like that. I'm not really sure, but these are great for counting for little kids. They're just naturally colored. They're missing the um, brightly colored neon colors that we're used to. These wood cubes came from the Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree, or whatever it's called now, $5 tree. Um, these were actually a dollar. And now these are kind of small. So if you have younger children, children younger than four, you're going to want to get bigger um, cubes, wood cubes, because they do sell them in different sizes. These were just the ones I happened to purchase. And I know we get lots of teachers here who watch the podcast or listen to the podcast to teach children younger than four. So that's why I wanted to mention it. Now these beads I love. These beads you can see are completely wood and they have a very large hole in the middle. And I'll show you what you can do with these shortly, but they're great math counters. And then this simple, 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 right? 
This is a round wooden disc. Okay, are you with me so far? These are like chips. You know how you, a lot of times you have like colored chips that you use for counting? These are wood colored chips and you can do a lot with these. And of course, scattered around the tray, you can see some hints of other things that you could use that aren't necessarily in my tray. Um, we've got pine cones, shells, rocks. And I forgot to mention these little people counters. How cool are these? I got these from the craft store a long time ago. I'm not really sure um, which craft store or when I got them, but I'm sure they still make them. They're little peg people and they're just natural wood. They have no faces, no arms, no legs, but people always make great counters and these are super cheap. So here you've got nothing but natural wooden objects and some found nature items. These shells actually came from the beach and these pine cones, I think I got them on clearance, like in a bag for Christmas or something like that. And of course, rocks, giant rocks like this one. I actually got a bag of these at the dollar store. Some other natural items that you can bring in are craft sticks. Again, I got these at the Dollar Tree. So craft sticks are super easy to source for teachers. And you can buy lots and lots of them for very little. Um, and they make great counters for your math center. You can use them in a lot of different ways. And then of course, we have those wood chips that I showed you. You can also just use a Sharpie and put dots on them. So they're like dominoes and you can use them as the, for number sense, you know, for counting. So students can count out certain numbers of items. So there's that. I wrote numbers on some of my flat rocks. So if your students are working on numeral representation, um, you can totally do that. I just used a Sharpie. Okay, next up, I wanted to show you what I do with the wood beads. So here we have these wood beads. They have a very large hole in them. And we have a dowel, which is basically just a wooden, a round wooden uh, piece. And these beads, actually fit really nicely on the dowel. And so you can just take, for example, this wooden chip, a child can take a chip, place it, and then count the beads onto the stick. Now what I would like to do um, is if I can find my drill, I have some wood slices in my block center that I could drill a hole in and put the dowels in standing upright and then the children could just slip the beads over the end and create like bead towers for counting. That's one idea. Okay, next up, I have these very cute little wood trays. I also got these from the dollar store and they're tiny uh, by comparison to like a tray that you would use for like a table service or something or breakfast in bed for mom. They're very small compared to that. You can see here's my hand in the middle. Um, but one thing you can do for young children, um, I put a piece of thin cork in the bottom. Um, sometimes you can find thin sheets of cork like in the scrapbooking section at your uh, local craft store. So I got one of those. And I took one of my big flat rocks and I put it here in the tray so a child could select a rock. Then they could find the matching wood chip with the dots. And so I've written the number three on the big flat rock. And then the chips have three dots, right? So they can practice number sense. One, two, three, and counting with one-to-one -one correspondence. There's your numeral identification with the number written. And now they can actually count out objects. So it could be one, two, three rocks, right? Or it could be one, two, three shells, right? Now they can count one to one. One, two, three. Does that match the dots? One, two, three. And here's the number three that matches the dots and each child could have their own tray. I will say these trays are not made to withstand lots and lots of use. So um, use your dollar wisely if you wanted to invest in these. Uh, but I know in Montessori, they have much larger trays. These I thought were very cute for like math centers type of a thing. And of course, if you're using larger items for counting like pine cones, you'll need a larger space. Or if you wanted to count the big flat rocks, you'll need a larger 
area. This is just one idea. Okay, and now I've created a five frame with those craft sticks, right? And of course you could do a 10 frame as well, but with young children, when they're learning to count, you can have them, for example, they could use one of these chips. It has four dots on it and they can count four rocks. One, two, three, and four. So how much fun is that for young children? They don't need plastic teddy bears, plastic um, cars, plastic cows, anything like that. This is actually more fun, right? Because what kid doesn't love touching rocks, pine cones, all these natural objects with all these different textures and unique looks? This is going to be more fun for them. And if you wanted to get into writing numerals or even keeping track or tally marks, if you will, for some of these things. So if they weren't wanted to make the four and they counted four in the five frame, they could write the four. Um, but these little um, chalkboards, because those are more of a natural item, right? And the chalk, I got these at the Dollar Tree and they're super small but they're perfect for young children so they could make tally marks they could make the dots to represent the number they could do a lot of things with these um, chalkboards and so chalkboards give greater resistance too for those of you who use that proprietary program you know what i'm talking about um, but it gives a lot more resistance and their hands don't slide off as they're writing so that's another great dollar store tool that you can use. Now, when it comes to erasing these, these aren't the greatest, so you can invest in higher quality ones if you want, but these do get the job done. Now, some troubleshooting tips. Here's the thing. I love those natural baskets that everyone is using in their classrooms, but I'm also a realist, right? And I had one of those baskets in my classroom one time many, many years ago, only because I didn't, I couldn't afford like matching containers and everything. And it was something that we had at home. But one thing that happened to my kids was they were always getting poked like in their fingers or under their fingernails. And it was such a huge hassle that I just took it out of my classroom. And I can only imagine all these natural wood bins and baskets and different things that are woven can also cause problems like that. I could be wrong. That's just my own experience, but I do love the idea. And so some of the bigger school supply companies like Discount School Supply or Lakeshore Learning have these natural baskets, which are actually a manufactured material. So they look um, like wicker baskets or whatever, woven baskets, but they're not actually. So you're bringing that more natural look and feel into your classroom with texture but it is an, a man-made material, right? So if I were to do it all over again with my tubs and baskets, that's what I would do. Right now in my classroom, I have mostly clear tubs and I think that really helps decrease the visual clutter for sure. Um, so you could be like me, go clear tubs or you could do um, those woven man-made baskets. Although those are a lot pricier because they're on trend right now, right? <laughs> but anyway, I love anything from those two school supply companies. So you probably can't go wrong. If you have a budget, put it on your list. Um, but if not, no biggie. So there you have it, my ultimate guide to building a natural preschool math center to help create a calmer classroom with less chaos. And before I forget, in my Amazon shop, I created a list for you of a lot of really cool natural materials that you can use in your own classroom if you have a budget. So look below this video in the description box where you can find a link to that shop or you can go, if you're listening along, to prekpages.com and type in Math Center in the search box. Until next time, I'm Vanessa Levin, onward and upward. Did you enjoy today's episode? If so, then I invite you to explore all that my Teaching Trailblazers program has to offer. Inside, you'll have access to time-saving resources, top-notch trainings, and expert advice that will transform your teaching experience. The curriculum, resources, activities, and printables inside cover everything from literacy and math to social-emotional development and fine motor skills, ensuring that your little learners grow and thrive all year long. 
you'll find more than 70 professional development trainings that will help you do everything from handling tough conversations with parents to teaching specific literacy skills and even improving circle time, plus much more. Visit teachingtrailblazers.com to learn more, apply, and get started on your journey to teaching better, saving time, and living more. I'll see you on the inside.